This is the Skywatch AZ GTI mount, a nice small mount, very practical as long as you don't want to put a heavy payload on it. Um, to use it, it's quite straightforward, um, set it facing north. There's a couple of locking, so you have to lock this one into position. And this one, as with any telescope, if you unlock this one, just make sure it's nicely balanced so it's not being pulled one way or the other by the weight of the telescope. And you can adjust the knob here to move it backwards and forwards. The other key thing to note is, and it has got some spirit levels in the standard tripod you can buy to come with it, um, just make sure it's very level because it gets very confused if it's at an angle. Um, so it's currently powered externally by an external lead, but you can put some batteries inside it. And I'm going to show you how to use it using the um, standard Android app, the SynScan Pro app, which can also be run on other software as well. I've run it on Windows. I believe you can also run it, well, I know you can also run it on um, Apple products, but I don't have any of those. So um, here's the basic mount. It's aligned, it's pointing north, ready to go. So the first thing to do is to turn it on. But before I do that, I just want to point out there is a hole in it for putting in one of these old fashioned hand controls if you wanted to do that. I've never tried using it, but um, uh, you can control it with these. And I think if someone's using one of these who's been using telescopes for a long time, they may prefer this as an interface. But coming new into this activity, I imagine most people would want to use a smartphone or tablet to control it. Um, the other thing to note as well is the software I've moved over on my large amount now as well. I've replaced the handset with one of these. It's relatively cheap, it's a SynScan Wi-Fi controller and that just blocks into the hand control on my HEQ5 Pro. Um, so I can use exactly the same software interface on both of my mounts, which I find very helpful. The other thing to note as well, the Wi-Fi signal that comes off here can be accessed by more than one device. And I mentioned that so that if, for example, you've got a couple of Apple products, certainly historically, I don't know if you still can have to do it now, you have to use one of the Apple, say your phone, to control the mount, and the other one if you want to run a, um, the Sky Safari software on it. Um, so you can access it from multiple devices. So, so let's go through that. So if I turn it on, it starts flashing and that means it's broadcasting a Wi-Fi connection. So it's like um, uh, your Wi-Fi hub at home. And uh, so to connect to that, you would select SynScan ID. Each one will have a unique ID. You can change that as I've done to do online. Once that's in, you then go into the SynScat Pro app here. That opens up and the first thing you'll be wanting to do is to actually connect to the mount. Now, in mine it gives me a choice of which mode I want to go in. Um, this won't be part of the standard builds. I've upgraded the firmware because I normally actually do use this in equatorial mode now. But for the purpose of this demo, we'll do the alt AZ mode which is the one that you'll be doing uh, when you first get your scope. Yes, we know we don't look at the sun, so that's good. So there's a number of different things available on the screen here. Um, one of the things you might just want to do is go into settings, and location, and make sure it's automatically updated your location. Um, in fact, it seems to think I'm a little higher than I am, so I'm going to change that later. Um, and then uh, there's a number of different options open to you. The first thing we'll be doing is aligning, uh, which is the top left. And then you've got a variety of options on the top to actually then go and look at a particular object. Now, for hardened astronomers amongst you, probably wouldn't be very keen to see under star, we have the solar system, which consists not of stars, but it's just a convenient way they've grouped them. You then go to a named star or some double stars if you wish to, uh, and also the deep sky object. You can either go by name or one of the different categorizations for them. It's a little bit like the um, some of the options you get for the object looking on the handset for the uh, older way of accessing these. So if we look at alignment, uh, there's a number of different options. I'll just show one star alignment now, just to get the general idea. Um, they can do much more sophisticated ones. So for example, align with sync allows you to do plate solving, uh, which I do do now for this. But uh, anyway, first thing to do I find is just press reset the alignment. Um, unless you're putting the mount in exactly the same place 
It's good just to wipe its thoughts as to where it is, so you're starting from scratch. So one star alignment, this will be a little bit difficult as we're doing this in the middle of the day. Um, and what it's saying is I want to choose one of these stars uh, to align by. Um, in fact, the first star is a planet in this case, Venus, because it's very bright in the sky at the moment, and it tends to be in brightness order. So I will select Venus. Um, again, I can't actually see it at the moment, but I have been using that because over the last few months it's been very bright in the evening sky before the rest of the dark, the sky gets dark rather. So press begin alignment. As you see, it's gone to where it thinks Venus currently is. I think that's about right, actually. Um, and then it says manually center it. So you move it around a little bit just so that um, your eyepiece is in the correct place and you can see it there. So yes, that's right. And then you press the middle button here. And that means it says alignment successful. So what this means is so the computer software has got a map of all the sky around it, but it's not quite sure where you left the telescope, frankly, when you set it up. So that allows it to orientate it. And the more stars you visit and press that button on, the better. So typically you'd want to do it with more stars in the initial setup. What I believe happens with this though, is each time you go to a new star, or planet in this case, for example, Mercury, So again, we've gone there, we move it around a little bit. So yes, actually that's where Mercury is. And so it'll record that data point as well, just to make it more and more accurate. So that's the basic steps of how you go around aligning it and go and see a star in this example. Um, so that really gets you going um, and shows you the basics of how to operate this. So hopefully that's helpful.